Hey folks, today I thought we'd have a look at sunset levels as a case study. It's a common one, it comes up for extreme weather, it also comes up for rivers, so it's a really good one to have in your armoury. Uh, so let's begin, let's pop uh, Somerset Levels as your title. So this is obviously an area in the UK, in the southwest of the UK, and I'm going to draw it a bit like a map. So I'm going to put my north arrow in, and then essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw kind of what I see as the Bristol Channel, like this. So I'm going to write uh, Bristol Channel. So there we go, and then the rivers that feed uh, through the Somerset Levels and out to the Bristol Channel, I'm going to draw those in as well. So these are not at all kind of super accurate or anything like that. They're just there to sh remind us that there are lots of rivers that feed into the main channel running through the Somerset Levels. Uh, and they are rivers like the River Parrot. That's an easy one. To remember, double P, double T on that one. Uh, we've got the River Brew, B R U E, um, and we've also got the River Tone as well. Okay, so all of these rivers, uh, different, kind of large ish rivers, I suppose, feeding into that estuary there. So I'm just going to colour that in a bit. Um, just to, yeah, so it's an interesting one, Somerset. It's got all this natural kind of reasons for flooding, like all these rivers that feed in. But then it's also, so still on the natural point, but it's also got these hills. So over to the northwest kind of direction, you've got something called the Mendips. Okay, they're much bigger than this, but just in terms of our infographic, we'll get them on there. And then to the southwest, you've also got a range of hills called the Quantox. Quantox. There we go. So if you imagine, you know, you've got these areas of high land, and then this incredibly low land area, which much of it is actually below sea level or at sea level, uh, coupled with multiple rivers um, flowing into that area and bringing all that moisture from these um, hilly areas as well. So we're going to look at some of the natural reasons and the human reasons for the massive uh, flood event. Let's put uh, floods of 2014. And as I mentioned earlier, you can use this for your extreme weather case study in the UK, uh, but you can also use it for a river case study when you're looking at kind of causes of, of river flooding. So let's begin with some storm clouds, big cumulonimbus clouds and lots of rain. There we go. So in 2014 or 2013 into 2014, it was the wettest winter for 200 years. So more rain fell then than it had, in, had done sorry, for 200 years before. So wettest winter for 200 years years. So the ground was absolutely saturated. Uh, the measurement was 350 millimetres, so you can think about that with a ruler how big that is, um, fell in just, just, just in January and February. Okay, so that's about oh, six months rain, four, four to six months rain falling in just a couple of months. So huge amounts of rainfall. So you could argue that actually it's it's largely the cause of the flooding. So there was just an extended period of, of rain over the winter. Ground was saturated. Let's put in that the moors were saturated. That means if you imagine like a sponge when it's full of water, that's that's what saturated is. Now, it did a lot of damage, so let's get in some of that. We're gonna have a go at drawing a little sheep. There's quite a lot of sheep in this area. There we go. It's a terrible sheep, but there we go. Um, 16 farms. Actually, it's not, it's not the worst. Head needs improving, but that's okay. Um, 16 farms, totally flooded. 
damaged beyond belief, you know, had to be rebuilt from the ground up. Um, homes, so these are, you know, these are nice homes, this part of the world. You know, got lovely uh, big sort of detached homes and semi-detached homes. 600 homes were flooded. Almost to the point of being, well, they, unlivable, okay? Uh, flood water got inside and right up to about uh, sort of chest deep in uh, most homes. Um, things like the power, so electricity gone, cut off for months and months. Not only that, but just getting around, um, draw a road here. Uh, these roads were impassable. They they were flooded. They they you couldn't even see the road anymore, uh, which meant obviously people were cut off. So roads cut off, electricity cut off. So you've got a situation, haven't you, where people essentially haven't got anything, have they? they haven't got any access, and uh, they can't live in these buildings. Now, this area here, I know I've mentioned it quite a bit, but this is completely flat. Okay, this is flat moorland. Now, the village of moorland actually was really badly hit, but um, flat moorland. Moorland is like grassy, grassy, um, uh, spongy, soft ground. Okay, there's this used to be a watery estuary type area, but many years ago the monks came in and pumped all the water out and uh, recovered it as land. Uh, and it's, arguably it should just be flooded. You know, it should be an area that's a natural floodplain. So 16 farms flooded, 600 homes were damaged, roads were cut off. Um, not only that, let's put an arrow to that water, um, the flood water was heavily contaminated. And it was contaminated, flood water was contaminated with sewage, which is really disgusting, but yeah, human, unfortunately, untreated sewage, and also chemicals. So this wasn't clean water, this was really unpleasant, nasty, dirty water that was quite dangerous, really. Um, so what, what else did they do? Uh, I'll come back to what they do in a second, actually. Let's look at one more natural cause. Now, over here, draw some waves, we've got the Bristol Channel, and the tide comes in and it also goes out. So let's put tide in and out. Now when it comes in, it pushes water into the rivers. It actually increases the amount of water in the river. And um, what happened the day of the terrible flood is that we had high tide. So that's where the tide is at high tide. Sorry, I spelled that wrong. High tide and storm surge. Now, my classes should know what a storm surge is because we've been over it quite a bit, but a storm surge is where the water is higher than it should be normally. So if there's a big storm going on, if there's lots of clouds, lots of low pressure, the water level just rises and it can go up by a few inches, it can go up by a few feet. So the big problem was the high tide, but also the fact that it was a storm surge made it even worse. Coupled with all that rain, the saturated ground, it was a recipe for disaster. So what did they do? Let's have a look. What did they do to actually fix the problem? Well, so what they first of all did was they pumped the water out. Pumps were brought in from Holland. Now Holland is a place where they're quite used to flooding and they had these industrial pumps so they brought those in to bring the water out. I think it's actually brilliant that it's just started raining at home now as <laughs> I'm doing this case study. Um, so yeah, pumps were brought in from Holland to remove the water and to try to get to these houses. Um, and they were pretty effective. But one of the main issues was that the Environment Agency, which is our government agency for uh, everything to do with our waterways, um, they had not dredged 
dredging is um, where they take sediment and silt out the bottom of the river. They had not dredged for 15 years. And because of that, the, all these rivers, their capacity had shrunk because the silt and the sediment had built up in the river, essentially reducing how much room there was for water. So that was actually one of the biggest kind of problems um, and the reason why uh, this flood happened in the first place. Now we're just going to finish off with some data for you. So in pounds, it cost 10 million, okay, 10 million pounds of damage. So that is uh, everything included, you know, the homes, the farms, all of that. Um, now, unfortunately, for people who still wanted to stay living there, many of them, their insurance didn't pay out at all, and they couldn't get insurance on their property in future. So if they had made a claim, uh, they would then not be reinsured. So uh, if we put here insurance costs uh, went up, let's put an arrow, and in brackets some could not get insurance. But not only that, a lot of the people, I'm going to put a little stick person down here, a lot of the um, residents, let's call them residents, were displaced. So that means they're not homeless, they've got somewhere to live, um, maybe they've had to go and live in a caravan or a friend's house or families, but they were displaced. They were no longer able to live in their home in the Somerset levels. So I hope that's helpful. It's just nuts and bolts of what you need to know for that case study. Um, it's a classic one, like I said, for extreme weather and for rivers. So it's a useful one to come back to and have in your toolbox.